What's up, everyone? Welcome to Level 7. It is time for another episode of the Agents of Fandom podcast. I'm your host, TJ Zwarich, Editor-in-Chief of AgentsofFandom.com. Ready to talk about some What If, the last two episodes, as that series has come to a conclusion. And also, prepare for the next Marvel series that we have coming to Disney+. Plus. The first straight bingeable series releasing all at once on January 10th. Echo, and I am joined not by my trusty co-host Adam Blevins as always. He has some very busy personal matters coming up. So if you're listening to this, give Adam a shout out, whether it's on Twitter, message him, something like else, some uh, whatever it is. He's got a lot going on, as we all do right now, you know. Mm-hmm. But because he's not here and getting to talk about these wonderful shows right now, let's uh, we lo- we love Adam. So uh, shout out to him. Wish you were here, my friend. But I have a very capable. Co-host joining me today in his stead, host of the Comic Corner uh, show that the Agents of Fandom have up on YouTube, where you can find some of the very biggest comic creators in the industry right now. Damon Gray, how are you doing, my friend? Almost said Damon Tweet again. My goodness. Come on. (laughs) I'm doing good. How are you? (laughs) Doing well. A little sleepy, but ready to dive into it. Uh, I'm very, very excited for Echo, and I can't divulge too much, but I'll just say that I have been emailed by uh, to potentially go and do a little bit of in-person press activity revolving something around the show. Mm -hmm. Can't say too much else, but hopefully that all pans out and we'll be able to get that ready for the people as well. But this show comes out January 10th. I'm very excited. We're going to go full on Echo Primer mode, but also... I want to make sure that we uh, talk about the last two episodes of What If as well. Before we do so, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button for us. It does wonders against the YouTube algorithm, you know, making us show up right there at the top. It's so important for us. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And you can also find the Agents of Fandom wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure you leave a nice five-star rating, leave a review, and follow the Agents of Fandom wherever you get your socials. Agents Fandom on TikTok and Twitter, Agents of Fandom everywhere else. First things first, Damon, before we even dive into Echo, let's talk about what if. Um, mm-hmm. We broke down the last, uh, the first uh, the first set of episodes. I can't, is it seven? Or is there nine total episodes or eight? Nine episodes. Nine episodes, yeah. So we broke down the first seven episodes with the Salam Nerds podcast. We had Neebs on, we had Jabs, Jazz on with Adam and I. We broke down the first seven uh, and we'll go through eight and nine in detail. But before that, what did you think of season two as a whole? Season two is a step up from season one in terms of storytelling, in terms of animation, in terms of creative choices. It's definitely a step up. Uh, I really enjoyed that for the most part. This was what a what if is. It's an anthology. Each world is kind of on its own. Sometimes some things are continued. Sometimes things are just kind of left as is. And that's okay. And that's what I like about what if stories. Um, you know, we'll talk about these last two. These were probably my least favorite of the entire series which is fine uh the, overall the season was very very good and we got some of like my favorite what ifs out of this season just in general which is great uh, especially the kohori episode which was fantastic yeah i couldn't agree more the kohori episode was stupendous and although the some of the storytelling in the final episode uh didn't really wasn't really my favorite i did love that we got to see more kohori and i can't wait to see more of her in the future as well. Um, but let's talk about the Avengers in 1602 because kind of what I teased the last episode um, was that this really isn't going to be, I think, what most ex- people expected when they hear Avengers in 1602. You know, I personally thought it was going to be, who like who could this new Avengers team be? Like, who, who are the Avengers of 1602? Is this going to be a team led by Kahori? Are there going to be some other names that we know from around the marvel universe that were on our earth in 1602 what's going on but it's a totally different universe the modern day avengers that we know and love set up in this universe in different roles and i'm just going to throw it right to you next because i th- mm-hmm. totally thought they were doing something specific with this episode when i saw what they, when i saw some universal cracks and it felt like the perfect opportunity and they didn't do it. So I want to, I want to throw it to you first for your yeah. thoughts on Avengers in 1602. Yeah. What if 1602 is what if we told a different story and it probably would have been better. 
Uh, that is kind of what happens here. Uh, 1602 in the comics is a thing, and it's essentially Avengers, but in 1602 uh, form, it's where we get Lady Catherine Bishop. It's where we get some other crazy uh, what-if scenarios with these characters. But in this universe, I was really genuinely thinking when Wanda Merlin brings in Captain Carter from her Which house, is super cool to start. Wanda Merlin, super cool to start. Love great that. idea. You know, Wanda Merlin, great, great idea. Fun. Uh, and that's what it should be. It should be fun. Uh, yeah, no, I thought we were about to have an incursion on our hands. And that's kind of what I was really hoping for. And I do think these last two episodes, at least this last episode, on a general point, would have been a better what if story in terms of the grander MCU. It's what if we actually made this show not just have like general implications, but it felt more connected to everything. We do see the Loki tree at the very, very, very end, uh, which we'll talk about later. So you do have some connection there. But my biggest thing with this is I think this would have had a bigger threat, a bigger understanding on the Marvel Cinematic Universe multiverse. And if there was an incursion, the whole point of incursions, you can't stop them. No matter what you do, they just happen. And even the Watcher says some universes are meant to die. That's when I was really being like, yep, this is happening. An incursion is happening. They're bringing in Captain Carter, and she's going to witness an entire universe just being destroyed. Obviously, that didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, I think it's genu it would have been a better story to tell. I think it would have grasped more people. More people would have been shocked and been like, wow, this is actually the big threat of the MCU is just the ending of realities. No, what happened was the time stone is apparently made of purple mache and broke because of Steve Rogers uh, vibranium shields during Infinity War, which is fine. You know, it's a what if. What if that happened? That's cool. Um, this was I was never going into this episode being like I was really anticipating 1602. This is probably the one I was like going in and be like, OK, we're doing 1602 Avengers. Here we go. And it was fine. Um, my biggest gripe just within the story itself. You have Steve Rogers as a Robin Hood character. And not Hawkeye as a Robin Hood character. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, happens. yeah. But Steve's personality fits it perfect. All Hawkeye's got is a bow and arrow. That's the personality. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, but that's I know. like I just had to... at least put at least yeah. put him along his merry men like come on where, where, where's my boy in any of these it's very very that few could times that could have been one time we like do a... he died yeah that could have just been like an absolute perfect bit where it's like captain Ro captain steve rogers is robin hood leading the merry men but anytime it gets to a situation he just will be like fire and then like hawkeye just comes from behind him and like shoots the arrow for him fine. that would be a hilarious little bit that would have been fine. Anyway, that's a minor gripe. Minor, minor gripe. Uh, but the episode as a whole was fine. Uh, it was, again, probably my least favorite uh, out of all of them. Part of the finale. One of the criticisms of all the... And I don't like... There's so, One of the annoying things with the extended amount of Captain Carter we've gotten is there's been some productive good interesting discourse and that's the stuff i want to hit on um yes. but then there's also just been some trash you know the bigots are out in full force as they also do mm -hmm. anytime they see a, wim a woman on their screen they don't want they don't want it and they want all their heroes to be men, men yeah and they're done um but there has been some good discourse on the topic as well and one of them is our friends uh, is our friend brit who always tunes into the show she's always uh, around for our live shows and she brought up a great point that like one of the reasons why Peggy Carter is like people aren't liking seeing this is because they're not giving Peggy Carter her own stories. They're just mm -hmm. copy and pasting Steve Rogers lines. They're copy and pasting Steve Rogers stories mm -hmm. and just plugging her in there. And there have been some really cool. What if parts, the chemistry with her and uh, with her and Lake Bells and Tasha Romanoff, it's just perfect. I could watch yeah. a whole season of them together doing buddy cop stuff. Um, but throughout, there has been a lot of, oh, same thing we saw in Multiverse of Madness. I could do this all day. Um, fit, fit, fit into Peggy's thing. And like, you see it once or twice. It's kind of fun and interesting. The more it continues, it's like, okay, come on, we get it. 
But yeah, she's not her own character is kind of what exactly. you're getting at. She is just another version of Steve. And that's that's fine uh, for an extent. But then you can't actually attach to her as anything different other than just being, oh, this is Peggy being Steve Rogers. This isn't Peggy being Ke Peggy because in the oh man, was it the Agent Carter show? It was great. You know, that's it Peggy was. being Peggy. Like that's yeah. not Peggy trying to be something else. Um it's her with her own vibe and it's her, her own world. And I, yeah, it would have been cool to see her as a Captain Carter type character, but continue that aspect of her in those moments and not just being like, Oh, now we're doing, you know, the first Avenger, but just with Peggy Carter. Right. Like, I think that's like the genuine criticism. Like, as you mentioned uh, that just give her her own moments instead of just being like, Oh, Steve, Peggy, and I liked, same character, I liked right? Her it's like, origin. no, they're not. Yeah, like, I liked her origin of, like, no, I'm not going to leave the room. I'm staying here. And that led to her becoming Captain Carter. I thought that was really cool and how they began it. But then I was hoping for more different branches off of it other than just she's Captain America now. Steve is Winter Soldier now. I did enjoy that Bucky is... Uh, uh, Alexander Pierce, but a good guy from earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, still, I think there was a few other ways that they could have differentiated from that. Yeah, and I did also like, because I think we were both, a majority of us going into that episode was being like, oh, Steve's going to be the Winter Soldier. But there was a, actually a genuinely good twist with it being the Red Room controlling him and mm -hmm. not Hydra. I thought that was a great twist and that made him stand out once again differently. <laughs> but then it's like Peggy still had like those same moments. So it's kind of it, that those episodes are frustrating. Yeah. Um, but we did because of all the, you know, them sharing a lot of lines, we did get something that I believe at the exact moment sparked the same theory in both of us. And we both, I've been saying like, am I going to make a TikTok for this? Are you going to make a TikTok for this? Now we don't need to worry about it because we can just talk about it here and make a clip. And mm. it's when we hear Peggy Carter say, Captain Carter say the words, no, I don't think I will. When asked about her past Steve, Steve, like Winter Soldier Steve asked her about her, for, her former Steve. And she says like, no, like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to say and he says in the, of course, she says it in the exact same words, exact same inflection as old man Steve Rogers in Avengers Endgame. That has been a very controversial, heavily debated thing that they did at the end of Endgame. Is this, is this a massive plot hole that Steve just decided to stay in a universe and live with a Peggy Carter? Well, what happened to that universe is... Uh, Steve Rogers. What happened to that universe? Peggy Carter. How? What? What were all the changes done? You know, did they have two uh, uh, Captain Americas during that time? Was Steve just chilling, watching bad things happen to the world? No, Steve wouldn't do that. Why didn't it cause an incursion? Why was he who remains from Loki okay with it all? It caused many, many potential plot hole discussions. As we see all of this unfold now, as we know, Damon, we are long long Marvel fans from even pre MCU, whether it be mm -hmm. heavily invested in, I mean, we both dabbled in, in basically everywhere, but you know, heavily inv invested in comics for you, heavily invested in the animated stuff for me. Um, we, we know that they don't, as much as it seems like they do, they don't plan shit in advance. This no. as much as the, <laughs> the infinite as so, like so many people you hear say like, Oh, Marvel doesn't know what they're doing now. They have the Infinity Saga all planned. No, the Infinity Saga could not have been less planned out. They just had some really talented people headlined by Kevin Feige piece everything together after all of these projects succeeded. Now and that's how comics work too. That's how they've exactly, always worked. And that's exactly how comic works too. When you get a retcon mm -hmm. 10 years later that happens to work perfectly, it's not because they planned it for 10 years. It's because a great writer saw an opportunity and they made something happen. Mm -hmm. Now... I think there could be a case of that with he this happening here as well, because mm -hmm. I do not think they plan that like, Ooh, this is going to be a plot hole. But at the end of our next phase, 15 years from now, we will reveal something else happened, but we thought the same thing. What if our old man, Steve, Steve Rogers from the sacred timeline, the same Steve Rogers that carried me and, and his shield on the other hand and went to battle against Thanos that we saw in Endgame. What if the Peggy that he wound up spending the rest of his life with 
was actually Captain Carter. I I mean, hey, we both messaged each other roughly. Like you said, I have an idea, and I just went, yep, I have that idea too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I think that would just make the most sense. I think it would be the nicest completed circle for both of them. Um, I just generally think it would just be cool. And it would not wreck. I think it would make a lot of people happy. I think it would answer a lot of questions. And it would come up with it would be the answer to why Steve looked at Sam and went, no, I don't think I will. Like, it's just because like, he couldn't. where did he'd he be get un- that? Yeah. He'd be telling the whole, that he'd be un- unveiling the whole multiverse to, to exactly. Sam. And he knows he couldn't exactly. do that. Because as we see, Peggy's got the Watcher as her little friend who can take her in and out of the... Cam Carter has the Watcher as her little friend who can take her in and out of the multiverse. Even though he's not mm-hmm. supposed to do shit, he does. She can do a little yeah. bit of multiversal travel with some help. Yes. Now, I will say... It makes sense say... that the Watcher, who d- isn't supposed to intervene, yes. but loves to anyways, because that's what he does. Yep. He looks and sees Steve Rogers... Going through all these different timelines, hopping from multiverse mm. to hopping from universe to universe throughout the multiverse, and goes, "Hmm, he he shouldn't be doing this. This is going to cause some problems." But I may have a friend, a friend who could use a Steve Rogers in their life, and puts them together, and then they hang out. I'm sorry, I just thought the watcher was in the room with me. <laughs> oh, really good. Uh, Thank yeah, Thank no, you. it makes the most sense, and it I think it would just be cool. It would. You know what episode that should be? You know what episode that should be? Not even a what if episode, but that's the show that a lot of people want, which is what happened to Steve Rogers when he was giving it. That's the finale of it. Yes. That's how you piece this and this and you put them together, right? Ooh, that's so good. Now, what Marvel does need to do is explain how the hell a, an incursion happens at this point. <laughs> because, because no, and bringing it of back Madness to that, supposed, yeah, go ahead. In go multiverse ahead. of madness, is I was thinking about how like you you were saying like you know the one thing incursions can't be stopped, but like looking back at multiverse of madness, that's actually the last line of it is Clea saying to Doctor Strange, "We have to stop an incursion." So it'll be interesting to see they they have to explain how it works, what it means. But yeah, it, how it I guess that could mostly. lend to the potential yeah. of maybe they can be stopped, and maybe that is what we saw in this episode. Maybe. Uh, if a, an incursion can be stopped, then I'll raise an eyebrow or two. But um, they do need to explain how one happens. Because if it happens by meddling in another timeline, another universe for too long... Man, well, what has Peggy been doing out here? <laughs> like causing chaos amongst all these timelines. So th- th- there are some things they do need to explain. Maybe Deadpool 3 will explain it. Maybe what if season three will explain it? I don't know. Uh, but th- there are still some things as we are a good chunk now into phase five that they do kind of need to like give me the rules. Yeah. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. They, we, we are very much overdue for a set of rules, you know, like a scene of where the collector is basically explaining what all the, all the infinity stones do in uh, guardians of the galaxy, something like that, Mm -hmm. where it's just like, these are the rules of the multiverse, something that we can follow and the general fan base can, because you know, you and I can go for days where it's like, this didn't make sense. Okay. How can we make sense of it? Like, we'll find ways to answer all of the possible questions, which, you know, you shouldn't have to do, but we will do because we love it. Um, But we need, there needs to be something out there for the general audience to just go, okay, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. These are the characters who can break some rules. These are the characters who can't break any rules. And I do Mm -hmm. think it's going to all come towards the multiverse being saved by a combination of like Loki, Wanda, and America Chavez, maybe in Cahoti. Like, Strange. maybe that's what that's going to come down to in Doctor Strange. Um, yeah. But you never know. We could still end up seeing they, you know, teased a lot of it in Multiverse of Madness. And we got to see a lot of it more here in the finale of What If. It's tough to always rely on Doctor Strange as a hero. 
Doctor Strange will kind of always do what he thinks is right, but that often leads him down some not so great paths as we saw from variants in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, and then as we see here in the final episodes, what if Strange Supreme intervened? It's framed all throughout the beginning of the episode like, hey, Peggy, my old pal, help me stop a bad guy. But as soon as we realize the bad guy is, of course, Cahody, we know she's not going to be the bad guy. We saw her episode. She's, she's not going to be doing some bad stuff. Um, she just did the whole, they just did the coolest. What if the, uh, uh, what if colonization didn't work? And, uh, like we got to see how that worked and they handled it much. She handled it much, much better than, uh, the colonizers of the real world. Shout out back to episode six, uh, Queen Isabella, our friend Carolina, uh, Ravasa who voiced, uh, the queen in that episode. So that was, uh, really cool as well. But going back to it, we know Cody's a good guy. We know she's a good person. We know she's a hero. And we eventually get Strange versus Pe Captain Carter and mm -hmm. Cahody. They team up. They make a pretty cool team. Um, this, to me, though, the finale episode was the absolute like icing on the cake for what season two was. Because I agree with you. Season two was a step up. Uh, Animation-wise, everything. It was just better. I enjoyed it a lot more. But where I found they really struggled to find the balance was they would give us a real either a really cool story but the characters that they would plug in either didn't really fit or weren't that interesting to me or they would give us a story i didn't really care about like for example re-showing the captain america movies over again but the chemistry between peggy and nat was so good i didn't really care they struggled to find the balance it was either like the character work and the chemistry was perfect or the the like the cameo side things that they plugged in um didn't work it, we, they ne they very rarely got all of them together for one and i found that was the case for this one as well like they just threw in some was that it was hulk with a vibranium shield that the king of wakanda gave to thor in the 1602 episode mm -hmm. but it was in a hulk what are all of these things like i get that's what what if is but Pick some ones that are easily or are, are a little bit easier and more easy to recognize to go, like, or like some from season and, one. And you're like, yeah, like more fun, like Hella and Wen Wu. That's beautiful. That's chef's kiss. That's such a great idea. Yeah. Um, but then they just mixed in some of these things that are like, what the hell is even going on? It that that kind of felt like what that episode was. It was like, what the hell is going on? This like yeah. <laughs> none of this felt like this led up to this moment. None of this did. It was yeah. just like if there was like a little ending to every episode where you saw you know Strange Supreme like maybe grab a bad guy here or grab a bad guy, and you're like, oh, what is he doing? And then that one of the episodes like, he grabs a good guy and you're like, what the hell? Like Yeah. So it's the op like it just it felt messy for me honestly and when it when it was over you know we get that nice shot of the loki tree and it was like ah cool this makes sense why this came out after loki season two so that makes sense it, but it was like i again these last two episodes for me was i kind of look at them just like what if we told another story i think it just would have been better i i mean like i'm even i don't even think the stories necessarily had to be changed they're just could have been more done with them. Like what mm -hmm. if season two for me felt a lot of very much like, you know, I enjoyed it much like I enjoyed Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness. And guess what? I even enjoyed quantum mania and I even enjoyed love and thunder. Yeah, we did. But <laughs> all of those movies could have, and should have been better. There were very specific ways, very clear ways that have been like, if you fix this, this, and this, this is an improved film. Um, mm -hmm. that's the case for quantum mania. I don't know that that's the case for multiverse of madness. Like there's some writing things I didn't like, and I think the style's not going to be for everyone, but to me, that movie to like improve it, you'd really have to change it. Um, I, I, really I think have, that yeah. also is, I also think that's the best of the three. Um, I agree. Uh, and I, I notice how I'm not comparing Wakanda Forever there. I'm not comparing Guardians of the Galaxy there, and even the Marvels for me, because I think all three of those movies are above uh, the other three movies. Maybe the Marvels and Multiverse of Madness are on a similar tier. Um, but anyways, getting back to what I was talking about, they're good, but as a fan who's been doing this for a long time with, you know, we got ideas of our own sometimes too, there's just like, sometimes you're just mad it's not a little bit better. It's like, this was good, but if they changed this, this, and this, it could have been better. Um, and that's, you know, that's 
fans of anything that's fans of content that's fans of sports every year you're mm. looking at your team when you're done and going yeah oh, this is a great team we had a great year but if we had a player who could do this we uh, a coach who could do this we probably finished the season a lot better and you that's how i game, felt about you know if you didn't exactly. lose that game you look back and you're just like ah almost got it yep yeah and so often in sports it's like ah if we didn't lose all of these players to injury this would have gone a lot better. Well, that's what been this last two years. There's been a pandemic. There's been multiple strikes. There's been uh, overworked, uh, overworked VFS artists. There have been, they lost their big bad to the law. Like there's, there's a whole lot of injuries going on in this team right now. And they've still put together some pretty good teams, some pretty good games. And I still think there's a championship team out there. Uh, as soon as they can put all the, all the pieces back together here. Um, but any other parts of the final, the finale episode that you wanted to touch on? Obviously, it was cool getting to see more of Cahody. Um, I'm, I don't know when or if we're going to see her again. I don't want to say if because we're going to. At the bare minimum, she's going to get, um, and it's at least an attempt at a comic run. She's going to show up in next season of What If. Like we will see her at some point again. I'm sure we'll see her in the next season of What If. I'm sure we will hopefully, maybe, potentially see her in live action. This is Marvel uh, Marvel Studios project. I would be more surprised than anything if we do not see her in the Secret Wars movie. Why? Because if you name a character for Secret Wars and you ask me if they're going to be in it, I'm just like, sure. You know, everyone's going to be in that movie. It feels like it. It's destined to be. So... And what if is going to be like the catalyst of where cameos come from outside of like your old cameos that we may be getting like Deadpool three, you know, I am sure we'll see zombies. I'm sure we will see Captain Carter again. I'm sure we will see a version of strange Supreme, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of like what, what if is to me is it's almost setting up secret wars cameo. So I'm not like too mad when stories don't go my way or the way I think they should be going. Um, because but overall, what like if said, they did yeah. and they can exist in yeah. your mind? <laughs> yeah, but overall, you know, much better season. I'd say last season was like a 500 season. This season felt like, you know, just above average. You know, you, you, you know, 75% winning percentage. That's what it felt we like. We made it to the second round of the playoffs for sure. Yeah. 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 Like we got to the next round, you know, didn't win a championship. We lost in the, in the Eastern Conference finals this year. A great year. A great mm-hmm. year. And hopefully we can improve upon it, make it better. Uh, but uh, definitely nothing to scoff at. Let's pivot to Echo because this is an exciting uh, and a project we've been excited about for a long time. It's different. It's going to be unique for multiple reasons. It is TV mature. It is the first Marvel Studios project with a mature rating on it. Now we know there's more of that coming in the future with Deadpool, maybe Blade, uh, Marvel Zombies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as of now, the very first one we've gotten will be Echo, and not only. Is it going to be the first uh, TV mature rated project, but it's also going to be the first television show that they're releasing all at once. There's five episodes, and I think this is wildly smart because I like until they solve the issue of making their Marvel TV shows more like TV shows with a showrunner mm-hmm. and a week to week plot more than just six or five or six or even eight episodes, at least 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. I think all of these shows would have been better released as binges aside from maybe one division. Um, and not because the binge model is better than the week to week model by any and means. She-Hulk. I'd say she Hulk. Um, and she, like, maybe she Hulk too. She Hulk was done episodically very, very well. I yeah. agree. Um, but most of these projects have really felt like, Oh, like that was, that was the episode I got this week. Like when you're kind of somewhere in the middle or you get to the end, you're wanting something else, you're building it up week to week to week. And then mm-hmm. something kind of falls a little yeah, bit. Your flat. late it's second act, like kind of like part of a movie, right? Yes. And that's exactly. essentially what these are and what they have been, not even teased, what they've been explained as. It's like, what if we had a six hour movie, and we cut it or a five hour movie, we cut it into six parts or a six hour movie cut into six parts. That's what these have been like pitched as and have been produced as so that's what we got and that's been in the majority of the issues like you know like i love hawkeye with all of my passion that is a movie cut up into six parts yes. down into like every detail every time i watch that show i'm thinking in my head how can i splice these two episodes so i could have theoretically made this into a movie uh that's just but again that's just how this was so i actually i 
agree with you on that. I never thought about it like that, especially with this show being it smart that it's that's how they pitched it. And that was everyone's biggest complaint. So why not just kind of release it all at once like it is a movie? And then when you get to what this will most likely be leading into in somewhat the Daredevil Born Again series, and if they're legit going to still have 20 plus episodes of that, if that's still how it's going to be, there's your week to week release. Because that's how you have your fill your filler episodes where your main characters are just up to something, a case, you know, an important case that doesn't have anything to do with the larger story, but you can have it when you have 20 plus episodes, because there's room for that. You can have your character diving episodes. You pick a side character, you give us a whole damn episode on that character. We learn about their families and you have room for it. You have time for it because it's a planned out season of television. And I think, although I uh, probably the majority of people prefer the week to week model over the binge model, you know, it's easier to keep up with. It's easier to have conversations with those around you. Stay current. Um, but these projects haven't really lent themselves to the week to week model other than she hulk and wandavision um and even what if which i think crushed on the day to day the day to day was absolutely perfect for that i, love I think for what if yeah the release yeah. method for what if is perfect and so i think something like echo where they're telling us a story of this character um introducing like you know filling us in more on Wilson Fisk and the Kingpin teasing us with some Daredevil like they did in She-Hulk. I think it's going to go really, really well as a binge when we're not thinking of every week we're not breaking down. Okay, what did you think of episode two? Well, episode two was missing this and this and this, but maybe it'll come in four. Well, no, we're going to watch it all at once. Yeah, no, and that's hopefully going to help the show, you know, gain its footing, gain some audience attention. Uh, that's how... For a lot of people, this may be also like, you know, Netflix. This is their style. This is how the Daredevil show and Jessica Jones and Iron Fist. You know, we try not to think about that show and Luke Cage. Uh, that's how this these shows were done. It was all at once. So the people who like that show, like that style, they get it. And that's what this is kind of aimed at, I I'd, I'd imagine. So, you know, there, there's probably a lot of different factors in this. I'm hoping that the show itself is very good. You know, from the trailers, it looks solid and I'm excited for it. So we'll see. Hopefully, you know, you're not just constantly. I think the biggest thing, too, and I, you see this everywhere, where we're not going to be getting people on a week to week basis being like, when's when's Daredevil showing up? Because we already lived through that. And that was terrible <laughs> going through that from week to week. So we can just move on from that completely. Thank goodness. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that front. What do you think is going to be required viewing for this series? Because, well, like, in advance of to know, you know, this is the, with this being probably their first technical spotlight feature. They mm -hmm. say that uh, you you don't have to watch anything extended. You sure. can just see this story here if you want to. It'll enhance it. But mm -hmm. it's so interesting because this is sort of a very twofold project. It's there's very two specific precursors that lead into this project and then nothing else it's hawkeye the mcu mm -hmm. project your favorite project that uh um with your favorite characters that introduced maya lopez to the mcu we got aleko cox just doing an absolutely incredible job as echo maya lopez and she is a part antagonist part um character whose story we need to learn uh, so she can go on her own path throughout Hawkeye. And then there's the Daredevil series, which mm -hmm. the producers of this show have said explicitly that they have treated the Daredevil series as canon in the creation of this series. Now, that doesn't mean this is a follow-up. This isn't a new season of it. It's not going to be referencing all of it necessarily, but they treated it as canon. And that's kind of how I always thought they were going to go about this is like, not say specifically like, yes, this happened after this. This is where the Netflix series arrives on the sacred timeline. Nothing like that, but just go basically like, yeah, something similar to that happened to these characters. And that's how they were molded ish. You know, yeah. like they had some similar stories and with them playing this as it's canon, we know Daredevil's in this. We know Wilson Fisk is the, I guess we don't know he's the main antagonist. We think he's the main antagonist. We know he has a very 
familial and intimate relationship with Echo as a father figure or an uncle figure. Mm -hmm. But we don't really know how much he is going to be the main antagonist. There's more quotes coming today of Wilson Fisk is going to be the Thanos of the street level MCU, where he's just not necessarily going to have infinity stones, you know, but like he will be behind all the corners of the street level crime that we are going to be following much like Thanos was in uh, in the galaxy for the first few phases. I'm just imagining you- Vincent Dino- Vincent D'Onofrio just sitting somewhere on a street with the fun. Don't embarrass me in front of Vanessa. Snap. <laughs> yeah. It's- great what if series. A uh, great what if episode idea, uh, idea right what there. If what Pen if had the Infinity, had the Infinity Gauntlet? Gauntlet. <laughs> great stuff right there. So, what do you think will be like? required how much do you, do you think they're yeah. going to be telling a very enclosed story that's going to be very focused on maya lopez uh, i genuinely think and the kingpin relationship yeah i genuinely think so and i've always approached shows like comics uh, these shows hopefully more than the other that you can just hopefully dive right on in uh at least i tell people that with comics all the time you know you just dive on in hopefully not in the middle of an arc but at the beginning of one and you can just go right ahead and then you can kind of backtrack if you want. I do. I would suggest if you are looking for more like Maya Lopez, like, you know, the Hawkeye series is it. That's her MCU origin per se. I assume they're going to go back in time in this show to explore more of that and to explore more of her relationship with Kingpin. And same thing with the Daredevil show itself. If they are treating that as canon, then you'd, there are some episodes in there that show his past with his father and how he became who he is. Maybe they'll dive into that in this show. We will see. That would be really cool. Willie. Do. Willie. <laughs> That'd be really cool if they do. And I kind of hope they do. Now, when it comes to the canon side of this, until Kevin Feige or I see it on the Disney Plus MCU timeline, you know, that'll always be a big asterisk for me personally. But I do appreciate them finally starting to address it. Yeah, we're starting to get the uh, a somewhat understanding of what's going on, a consensus, if you will, of like, yes, these are some rules that are going to be set in place here. Who We got introduced to Maya Lopez, Echo, in Hawkeye, of course. Who is she in the comics? Now, I know she has a bit of a complicated comic history, and so you don't need to do like a full-on craziness, but like, how long has she been around? You know, who created her uh, and when uh, what are some of like the main important storylines of Echo? Because most likely, and we'll get into this a little bit after the Echo we see in comics won't be the same as the Echo we see in the MCU. Not even like the name is going to be the same, but not even the power set like the power set is going to be totally different. We're getting a new power set. Buckle up, kids. Gather around the campfire. Let me tell you the story of the Phoenix Saga. I'm just going. We're not going that crazy. Uh, so back in the late 90s, like 99 is when David Mack created Echo in a Daredevil book. It was Daredevil number nine. There was a little arc from nine to 15 in the late 90s, early 2000s that if you really want to dive into the intro and all you could almost imagine Uh, The MCU version of this character where she's really hung up on trying to kill Clint Barton. This version is really hung up on trying to kill Daredevil because she has been told by Wilson Fisk, uh, who is essentially kind of became her adoptive parental figure, much like we see in the Hawkeye show, that Daredevil's the one who killed her father. Now, you could probably imagine that's not the case, especially when it resulted from a gunshot to the head. It was Wilson Fisk himself. So a lot of that became a back and forth between her and Daredevil. They had a romantic relationship. It was between Maya and Matt Murdock because Matt Murdock is the biggest slew in the entire Marvel universe, guys. Like uh, he, Everyone really has had a relationship is. with Matt Murdock. It's nuts. So they go back and forth. She finally kind of like realizes that Matt slash Daredevil didn't do this. Wilson, Wilson Fisk did. Uh, There's other legal drama going on with Fisk between Fisk and Foggy. Forget about that for now. But all you have to know is that this whole run essentially ends with now what we know that a lot of people have seen on social media with the now famous gun to the face of Wilson Fisk and then two shots to the head where he has later on an eye patch over one eye, an eye patch over the other. 
uh, and she goes off in her own little merry way. We don't see her again for a hot minute. Fast forward about 40 issues. <laughs> we don't see her again until, what was it? Uh, 51, Daredevil 51. David Mack also doing this issue, and he did the art on this as well. And this is the, the epitome right here of echo stories 51 through 55 and this is what i'm telling you if you want to read an echo story before going to the show you're going to want to read this because this is her vision quest this is what this show will be about it's about her finding herself her she's become lost after everything that's happened she goes to matt matt's like yeah, i'm busy girl like i'm busy you go find yourself so she does and she goes to a place called the res the reservation it's a place she went with her father and i very much assume we're going to see this in the show and it's a mix of many 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 people from many different tribes so don't assume that everyone from the res at least from the comics is of the same tribe everyone just kind of stops there if they're trying to find themselves need a place to rest need a place to eat this is where it is it's somewhere vaguely in the midwest uh she goes there she meets this elder who kind of they all call the chief uh and she goes on this quest to find herself she goes into the woods uh without food without water for four days and she has visions of seeing animals trying to decipher them and then on the fourth day she sees a very hairy man a very hairy short man and it's wolverine who then <laughs> takes her in shane yes uh who then takes her in and tells her a story uh that is a beautiful story that i, I do truly hope they have something very similar to this in the show because this deciphers her and a lot of characters very well and wolverine was told a story about a man who was just really struggling and the man was telling him the story and it's about having two dogs inside of you one's a good dog one's a bad dog you know one likes people one nourishes and the other one's just an animal and he feels that and the wolverine was on this res during his like animal phase so uh, you may remember like the 90s were like 2000s where he was just like that all that beast all the time this is when he was on this reservation being told the story and the epitome of it kind of comes down to you become whatever dog you feed the most so whatever you know if you feed the good dog more that you you know you're good if you feed the bad dog more you'd be bad that's the that is what maya lopez is she is a person struggling with everything inside of her so she goes off she also finds little, out that it was a little uh, a daughter. little a little a little prince zuko-esque if you will yeah she goes off uh <laughs> come on i thought you'd like that so much more <laughs> i do but there is a good really cool part in here uh the guy the man who told wolverine that story was her father that is cool. So it was so it's like it's a nice little turnaround. And he also heard that days after he told that story, he died. And it was because he was struggling himself with feeding the two dogs and which dog he was feeding. Obviously, it didn't turn out well for him. So the run ends with her going off and finding herself. She is also I, I do have to say this as well. In the books, she is more of a performer. She's a storyteller. She tells her story, you know, being deaf through art, through dance. And that's how she's able to communicate with others. She is able to mimic someone's ability to do anything physically within the first time of watching. It's remarkable. It's how she's able to play a piano perfectly, even though she can't hear. Uh, you see her playing a piano and just the echoes of the vibrations. That's where she kind of gets the name for herself echoes, the echo of the vibrations that she feels. So that is the epitome of echo that run 51 through 55. It's beautifully done. The art in the air is phenomenal. It is very well researched by Dave Mack to tell a very good indigenous storytelling. And you can tell he put a lot of, a lot of hard work into it. So I really appreciate that. And it was very well shown on page. You move on from that. Now you can, you know, things for this character do change. She became the Ronin. Okay. You know, uh, we have that storyline where she was Ronin. Okay. Then, yep. She did have the Phoenix force for a hot minute. A couple of years ago, she no longer has the Phoenix force. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> 
We're just going to kind of move on from that. The Phoenix came down, said, I'm going to hold a March Madness style tournament, see who's the next owner of me. Maya technically lost, but also won because of Phoenix. Very more Dragon Ball Z tournament of power esque of like, let's it's put a bunch a of people cool in the ring. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't get cool me wrong. Art. I didn't mean that as a slight. Yeah. I like that a lot of like, yeah. let's put a bunch of people we like fighting against each other and the winner wins. Something. You get a Phoenix Howard the Duck. I mean, come <laughs> on. Like, millions of copies had to be sold so that's that's maya lopez um again daredevil 51 55 mid 2000s if you're going to read that before going up to us this is it because this is going to be her vision quest for the show last thing i want to touch on before we get out of here in her you brought up her power set in comics and it's essentially mm. for the reasons she has them are different but it's essentially taskmaster 2.0 Right. It's essentially sure. I can see you do something and I can now do the same thing as you do um, sure. from her from for I feel like for Taskmaster, it's a little bit more of like I am mimicking exactly what you do for Maya. I almost feel like it's a bit of I can see it and then I can learn to do it better kind of thing. Um, yeah, she, that's just like my own. That she sees. Yeah, exactly. It's it's less of like a photographic memory and more of like an ability to understand and master after mm -hmm. seeing. How do you think these powers are going to differentiate in the mcu okay so we do know she's getting powers i have three levels as to what they can do depending on how crazy they want to go first level she just has advanced strength whatever you know the basic kind of power up that's fine whatever uh if you want to call that a power set that's fine the second one it was said in the comics that the storyteller is also known as the shaman if Marvel wants to go that route and we've seen them tie several characters and mash them into one, she can get a little magic pouch, become a magic user. We've seen magic users kind of pop out of nowhere. America Chavez is not a magic user in the comics. She is now strange. Ned Leeds cycle. is not a magic user well, in yeah. the comics. So like we can have her go the shaman route. I don't know if I would like that personally. That was just an idea that as I was reading it, I'm like, they could do that if they wanted to. The third one I think could be way more interesting visually and very cool for her character. And you've seen it tied to the very time we really saw her for the first time. She's a character in the shadows. She tells stories through shadow puppets. Even in her plays in the comics, we saw her dad do the shadow puppets of the dragon and the wolf. We've seen that. I think it would be really cool. I don't know how this can happen. Maybe when she goes on her vision quest she finds out some ancestral power comes in from emerge her whatever if she can find a way to control like shadows and kind of like almost like raven-esque control things and like have like a bird kind of i don't know i'm just like visually thinking like if she could find a way to do like shadow like shadow puppetry and make it like physical and real that would be so cool it would be completely out of nowhere for her character in some respects but we've seen hints of like the shadow puppetry and her being in the shadows and it, it would just be visually cool so th those are like my three big like all right so like strength shaman magic or just like go crazy let's have her control shadows go crazy will will she be a mutant that's another maybe. thing that they could potentially tie into it is maybe she'll maybe. be maybe she'll be a mutant um maybe she was dipped in the same mystical lake as clint barton and that's why they both have perfect reflexes maybe that's what happened um but who knows we're gonna... I'm like what <laughs> i'm just making things up now uh but uh it's gonna be interesting to see how they play it it could be some sort of you know, daredevils maybe doesn't have superpowers, but superhuman abilities and his um, way of moving around and kind of like understanding the world around him has often been said, like described as like a little bit of like an echolocation, like a radar. Um, he can sense where everything is around him, what down to almost what people look like because of how enhanced his senses are. It'll be interesting to see if they do a bit of like a um, a play on that with Echo with her different enhanced senses than Daredevil does. And as the two of them fight each other, kind of show both of that, that, those power sets in action. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see. And you'll be able to find all of it on Disney Plus and Hulu on J J January 
I almost said July, January 10th uh, <laughs> is when it begins streaming. And the whole five episodes will be streaming all at once. You won't have to wait week to week. You'll be able to dive into all of it. And so we will also be back next week covering the full five episodes of Echo. As soon as we're done with that, we are transitioning to a little Percy Jackson uh, content. So stay tuned. If you're a Percy Jackson fan, we will have many of your favorite content creators coming to join us. Some Agents of Phantom team members as long as, as well as the one and only Liam Crowley, Seaweed Brain Podcast, and more. So make sure you tune into that as well because we got a lot of fun, exciting content coming. Damon, what's cooking over at the Comic Corner, and where can the people find you on socials? On the Comic Corner, we are sticking with our bi-weekly schedule, everybody. Very exciting. We have Fat Thor on once again uh, this week. We will be discussing all the latest in comics, some of the new DC Comics controversy, everyone. They changed the way they do variants. They changed the paper they use on main covers and just talk about why that matters to comic shop owners and to the people who collect them. And, of course, our general reviews. I have Birds of Prey this week. We have a lot of good books this week. Uh DC Comics has been absolutely phenomenal from a storytelling perspective. It's been super great. And from a socials perspective, you can find me wherever there's a new social media app popping up these days on threads at Damon.gram, on Twitter at Damon Tweet, on TikTok at Damon Talks Comics. If you see a theme, you get the theme. That'll do it for this episode of the Agents Fandom Podcast. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. Make sure you're following wherever you get your podcasts and smash that like button on YouTube on your way out. Hit the notification bell, subscribe, and make sure you follow the Agents of Fandom on socials at Agents Fandom on TikTok and Twitter. Agents of Fandom everywhere else. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Like I said, we will be back next week reviewing the five episodes of Echo, followed by some great Percy Jackson and the Olympian content as well. We will see you next week, everyone. Peace.